there was a meme floating around for a while that said, when I die, I want my group members to lower my casket into the ground so that they can let me down one more time. <laughs> oh, it's so relatable, right? We have all been in those group projects where we do all the work and all the other people just get the grade. So if the phrase, this is going to be a group project, still sends a chill up your spine, today's episode is for you. We're going to talk about how to get over the mental blocks and get the support you need when you're writing your first book. So we're all adults here. So why is it that this issue of the group project is something that I still feel like we need to talk about? Well, the reason is I bet that fear of group projects is holding you back from doing the things that you need to do, particularly in getting the support. So let's break it down a little bit. What happened when we were in junior high, high school, college, and we were assigned to a group project? Well. I know from teaching and I know from experiencing this is that usually what happened way, way back, junior high, high school, was that we were put into a group. Now, sometimes this was maybe done intentionally, but more often it was either one, go find your group, right? Terrifying. Why do teachers do that? (laughs) As a junior high student, there's nothing worse than being left out. So you're scrambling around trying to find somebody so that you're not the last one picked, right? Or the teacher, you know, drew names out of a hat or popsicle sticks, you know, they'll write your name on the popsicle stick, pull out four, that's your group. Or sometimes they might have grouped um, the high achievers with kind of the people that were struggling a little bit more. There's all kinds of ways to approach this. As a student, all of those feel random. Some of them are, but they all feel that way, right? So we get thrown into this group where nobody in the group knows how to manage a group or work in a group. Did you ever have training on how to manage a group? I didn't. Nobody in the group knows how to manage a complex project. You're not being, you know, shown how to use Asana or Monday. (laughs) You are just thrown in there to the wolves, figure it out. And the third thing, and this is really, really key. If you are a high achiever, and I bet especially if you're a woman, you were really, really good at the project part. I'm speaking for myself here. I am very competitive. I've always been very competitive and it has always been really important to me to push myself to be better and better and better. Now that serves me well in a lot of ways, right? Because I can do a project. And I bet when you got that group project, you thought I can do this. Why don't I just do this myself? Well, group projects have another component, right? So what happened was you felt like you could do that project So you just did it. You had training on the project. You knew how to do that. You didn't know how to work in a group. You didn't know how to delegate according to people's strengths. You didn't know how to communicate when you were disappointed in a result. And we don't really want to do that, right? We don't want to call people out for not doing their tasks. We just, can people just do what they're supposed to do, right? It's it's so frustrating. Well, why does that matter now, now that we're adults? Well, here's the problem is we still have that mentality. All of us high achieving women, we carried that on forward all through college into the workplace. Those two things, they're still there. One, we know how to do the project. We believe we could probably do it better by ourselves than working in a team. And two, we probably still don't really have any training in leadership, right? What that means is that a lot of times we set out on a project that should be a group project, say writing a book, um, launching maybe a new media channel, if you're a business person, um, starting a new kind of a side gig, all of those are group projects. But because we felt like our group let us down in school, we try to do them by ourselves. Okay, so tap into, do you remember that frustration you felt when you got the grade back, when you had done all of the work. And there is that 98%, I hope, (laughs) 98% on your paper. And you got that. But also so did Danny, who didn't do any of the work. Can you tell? (laughs) I have have uh, some memories about this. You're doing that same thing to yourself. You are the one now that is doing all the work. And maybe you're still getting a 98. 
But that feeling of resentment, I bet that's under there. I bet you feel so irritated that you have to do this on your own because no one can step up and no one can support you the way that you need to be supported. That's why I want to talk about this. If you couldn't hear just when I was describing that, what a toxic mindset that is, it is. I I say this from a position of love because it's something I struggle with too, but we have got to break through that wall because if you're writing a book, you are not going to be able to do it by yourself. You just won't. You will not get a 98%. (laughs) You might be able to do a C plus book by yourself, but I know you don't want that. I know you know how to do the project. You want to do it right. You need to tap into the other part, the team management part. So let's talk about why this mindset is so difficult to break through and how we're going to break through it so that we can get you the results that you want on this book. Okay, so let's go into a little psychology here. One thing that we know, I've talked with my therapist about this over and over, is that when we experience bad things in a particular situation, our brain remembers that. Our lizard brain or whatever you want to call it, our brain remembers when you walked into this area, something bad happened. Don't go in that area. So, you know, for our, our primal ancestors, you know, what if you see something rustle in the bushes, get out of there. <laughs> Because the last time you almost got eaten by a lion, get out of there. You are not safe. Well, we know our brains don't always catch up to what's happening in our modern society. So our, our reaction to group projects tends to be the same as if we were getting chased by a lion. We know that we have been in group projects that were so emotionally and mentally taxing. Maybe we stayed up all night trying to do Danny's part. Come on, Danny. Or we had to do everything on our own from the very beginning because our group members were just slackers and they wouldn't participate. So now when we see this this idea of getting support, of bringing our team in, our brain is like, don't do that. That is bad. We've been there. Terrible. Red flag, red flag, red flag. But it's not. It is safe to trust people. It is safe to trust people. You will not get eaten by a lion. You aren't even going to have to share your grade with other people. It's going to be you. You're the author. But when your brain sets off that alarm, we have to step back and we have to think cognitively because what we're doing is instinctual and emotional. We've got to disrupt that link of feelings. And we've got to come in here and be the adult with our little childhood self that's inside of us that's so, oh, they hate a group project. And we have to be the adult and say, I know you want this done right. I know you want that amazing grade. You are not going to get that by yourself. Okay, so what are the things that I want you to think about to move through this issue and make sure that you are making the most of your book, that you are not overtaxing yourself, that you are getting the best finished product and that you're actually getting done. So there's two things that I want you to remember whenever you feel that, oh, I'm not going to be able to trust anybody feeling. One, remember that, yes, you had those group projects. They did not go well. That's okay. And it's okay to acknowledge that they didn't go well. You, you were failed by not being given any kind of training or framework for how to make that group project work. That was not your fault. That happened to you. Now you have power. So what I want you to do is when you, when your brain starts thinking of all those bad things that have happened when you got support, I want you to start thinking of all the good things that happen when you get support. Because I promise you, you've worked in a team that worked really well. So what kind of scenarios am I thinking of? Maybe you have a group that goes out to dinner every Saturday night. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to choose a place to go for dinner. But did you have fun? Do you have fun when you go out with your friends? You get that restaurant picked. You schedule the time you're going to be there. You make sure everybody's at the correct location. And then you get there and you have a good time, right? That's, that is a group project. It actually is a very difficult for a bigger group to choose a restaurant. You can do it every time, right? You have a great time. You get it done. You can collaborate with a group, right? 
have you uh, worked with a church group on something? Maybe you volunteered. Maybe um, I know my parents' church, they, they go out and uh, mow elderly people's lawns like one Saturday a month or something like that. That is a big undertaking. They have such a fun time. They feel so great after they have done that service. Have you worked with a group that way? Because I bet that everybody or the people you needed showed up, you got the task done, and it mostly felt pretty good. Even a family is a group. If you have ever tried to decide on the vacation that you wanted to go on, either with your extended family or with your kids, I bet you know this is a challenging thing to break down. You've got to look at budget. You've got to look at the timing. You've got to look at what the exact offerings are. What are the activities you want to do? There are a lot of moving parts and pieces. I bet you've done it. Now, I know there's some possibility that you have stayed in this group project mentality where you were doing everything, but the more you can embrace the times when you allowed other people to support you, the easier it's going to be to allow for the support you need moving forward. Okay. The second thing I want you to break through is this fear of failure. That's what's underlying all of this, right? You were in that group project and you did Danny's part, not because you wanted to help Danny, but because you didn't want to fail, right? And that is not accusatory. I get that. But if you hadn't done Danny's part, you all would have failed. You would have failed too. We don't like that. But Danny would have gotten in trouble probably, right? At least he would have gotten that bad grade with you. You didn't want to fail. That was the right choice for you, actually. I I believe that you wanted to make sure that you did the project, you got those learning benefits, and you felt that sense of achievement that we all need when we're that age. But when we start to be adults, sometimes we don't want to bring support on because we know if we don't tell anybody else that we're working on the project, then no one else can see us fail, right? Let me say that another way. So you know how if you bring a team of support on, but then you struggle, that team of support will see you struggle. Sometimes that lizard brain tells us, don't let anybody see you mess up. And what that translates to is that we don't bring a team on. We don't let anybody else know we're working on that project. And then that way we can never fail. Nobody even knew we were working on it. But you know what you're doing? You're guaranteeing you're gonna fail. If you don't let other people come on board for a big project like a book, you're not going to be able to finish it. You're just not. You are not going to do your part and Danny, the copy editor, Danny, the proofreader, Danny, the developmental editor, Danny. I don't know why we give Danny all these important roles. You're not going to be able to do all of those parts yourself. You just won't. It is time to let go of the pain and the disappointment and the frustration that you felt all those years ago when you did not have the training and you didn't have the the mental clarity and you didn't have the experience that you do now. So you had to do that group project by yourself. It's time to let it go. So the next time you are thinking about this big project and you feel this resistance well up in you where you can't let anybody in you don't want anybody to be kind of part of that circle and they're going to let you down anyway. I want you to stop your brain. Stop it. It's a spiral. It's not helpful. So step back from that spiraling thought pattern and remind yourself, one, that you have been in functional groups before. You have worked in groups where you got everything done and you had a great time. Run those through your mind too, not just Danny and his nonsense. And the second thing I want you to remember is that we need to ask ourselves, is the reason I'm not getting support because I don't want support? Or is the reason that I'm afraid of bringing support on and then failing? If it's that second one, that's not okay, right? We want to grow. We want to push ourselves. We are ultimately still that junior high student who really wanted to learn and achieve and and be the best, right? Be the best that we could be, put out the best projects we could put out. Okay, so I hope that moving forward, you're going to feel a little bit more comfortable with all group projects, or at least we're going to work in that direction. 
If you feel like it would be helpful to have a team that already knows how to manage um, everybody, how that everyone works together and is a really uplifting, positive um, team force, it may be that Page and Podium is the group project for you. Um, if not, if you want to assemble your own folks, if you'd like some support on that, I hope you'll reach out. So please like and subscribe so you don't miss an episode of our podcast. But then also, I hope you'll, you'll reach out if there's a way that I can support you one-on-one -on -one or if we can bring our team in to really help you make that book all that you want it to be. Okay. Happy writing, everybody.